How are you? Welcome to episode 203 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hope you're having a great day, a great week, great month. Heck, I hope it's been a great year. It has been for me. My name, if you're new to the show, I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick. I'm your host on Martial Arts Radio, and I'm a martial artist. I'm someone who loves the martial arts, and I get to talk about it here on this show, and hopefully that's why you're here. In today's episode, we're going to talk about speed. We're going to talk about some strategies for getting faster, some drills that will help you get faster, things that you can work on by yourself, and some things that you can bring into your teaching if you're an instructor or a school owner. What is speed, though? Let's let's start there. Speed is the ability to get from A to B with, with less time, right? The faster you are, the less time something takes. And why is that important with martial arts? Of course, it's pretty obvious. The faster you can strike or block, the more effective you're going to be. If your footwork is faster, you can set yourself up for a better position in a combat situation or a self-defense situation better. You can move out of the way better. What is speed not, though? Speed is not reaction time. And it's, it's easy to confuse the two because they go together. And in fact, some of the drills that we're going to talk about today don't just develop your physical speed, but they develop your mental speed, your reaction time. It's important to develop your reaction time. And there are things you can do outside of what we're going to talk about today to develop your reaction time. But the focus of today's episode is speed. First off, speed, being fast, requires being relaxed. Why? Because a contracted muscle, an engaged muscle, is slow to move. And here's an example. And if you want, you can even stand up and try this. It's pretty quick. Stand up. If you want, put your hand on the wall. Hold your knee up like you're going to do a a basic front kick. I think every style has some manner of front kick. Hold your knee up. Keep that knee as still as possible. And then do a front kick. Just notice how fast that is. Now I want you to do the exact same thing again. But from that knee up position, I want you to let your leg release just for a split second. Let that knee drop maybe half an inch, an inch. And then engage and throw the kick. I bet you're going to find that kick, that second kick to be a lot faster. Most people, in fact, if you don't really harp on holding that knee steady, will drop that knee naturally. There's something really natural about that movement. And it's natural because it's easier. Easier is relaxed. Relaxed is faster. How are we going to practice relaxation? One of my favorite drills, set into your sparring stance, whatever that is for you for For different people, it's slightly different. I'm not here to preach, at least not about that today. (laughs) Get into your sparring stance and have someone randomly call out now. And on their count, you're going to throw a technique. Let's say you're going to start with a back fist. Every time they say now, you're going to throw a back fist. doesn't matter what the movement is, but the tenser you are, the slower you're going to be. This is a great drill for a class. If you want, you can have somebody record their voice saying now and silence. If you were really nerdy like me, you could rig up a playlist of silence and the word now, and you could randomize it and you could play that for yourself to practice. The tighter you are, the more you're anticipating that call, the slower you actually are, the more you can, you can settle into that relaxation and just only engaging the muscles that you need to stand up, the faster you're going to be from where your hand is to your target. And honestly, if you're practicing hand techniques, I would encourage that hand to be down, not up. There's a whole other conversation we could have about guard position and where those hands should be. We're not going to go into that now, but for this drill, even if you're going to keep your hands up as you spar, keep your hand down. Try it. See what you think. Second drill for practicing relaxation. You're going to have two people, partners. They're going to face each other. One person is going to be the attacker. The other is going to be the defender. Both people have their hands down at their sides. You may have done something like this. You may have even done this drill. The attacker, at their own timing, is going to very lightly and to start off very slowly, slap at the defender. They can slap you know, up to the head or to the body. The defender is going to 
slap, parry, push, whatever you want to call it, that hand away. Again, start slow, stay light. Over time, you can start to move faster. And you will be shocked at the difference in your ability to move quickly when you're relaxed versus how much slower you are when you're tight. When you work with somebody like this that that just they can't wrap their brain around chilling out because maybe maybe they they see that technique coming in as a threat. And that's why it's key to go light because if you feel threatened, you're going to be tighter. And that's not what we want. We're trying to train the body's ability to just move very quickly from A to B, flick that hand away. With time, you get a lot faster. And the ability to relax in that situation applies in a lot of other things. And it's going to move into some of these drills that we talk about as we move on. Let's talk about raw speed, just the ability to go fast. Speed is easy one time. It's easy to throw a technique very quickly once. But what if you have to do it again right away? What if you have to do it a bunch of times right away? Speed degrades really quickly as we get tired. And that's where endurance becomes really important. Say you want to work on sidekicks. All right. So set a timer. Uh, 30 seconds is a good place to start and throw as many sidekicks at a certain target as possible before that buzzer goes off. Now write it down. Tomorrow, come back, same target, same positioning. See if you can get one extra kick in. Over time, as long as you're being diligent about the quality of your technique, you're going to get faster. You can quantify what you're doing. And that's something that personally, I think is missing from a lot of martial arts stuff. We don't quantify very much. And there, there's some growing movements. Some people have some businesses. They're doing some interesting things to quantify, to score power and, and track speed for martial arts. And I think that's great. This is a really easy, inexpensive way to watch yourself get faster. I mentioned in the description of, the, of this drill, kick at a certain target, strike, punch, whatever, at a certain target. And it's important that you're training some sort of accuracy here. You don't want to just kick anywhere. You want to try and get the kicks up to a certain height. You want to make sure your any of your techniques are going to a certain intentional location. I recommend, in fact, on your kicks, bringing them back down to the floor each time and then going back up. Why? Because you're not relaxed if you're holding that leg up. That's a good time to talk about retracting speed the ability to pull that technique back. We tend to focus, when we're, especially when we're talking speed, on the movement out, the extension of that motion. That's not the only part that matters. You can't strike again. You can't block again if the arm or the leg is still out there. If your leg is still out there, you can't move. You can't change your footwork. And in fact, this is a, a prime strategy in sparring. People wait for that leg to come out because that's the slowest point for your ability to move away. They'll jam you. They'll charge you, right? We've probably all seen this. Most of you have probably experienced it. So the ability to get that foot back and down, get that hand back into your guard position is important. One of my instructors used to describe this as pulling back twice as fast as you go out. And while that's not really measurable, at least not yet, and it's not accurate. You're not going to pull back twice as fast as you go out. It's still a good way to think about it. And when we practice our techniques really focused on that retraction, believe it or not, the extension does get faster. In a lot of what we do, we've got this push-pull motion going on. Best way to think about it, reverse punches. You can't throw a good reverse punch unless you're pulling the other hand back quickly. So there you go. Think about retraction. You will get faster. The last piece we're going to talk about today, drilling, just going as fast as possible. Now that sounds like chaos, doesn't it? But that's not what I mean. In fact, the exact opposite of what I mean. Speed, just like strength and flexibility, is an adaptation of your body. Your body gets faster as you continue to practice faster. If you only ever practice at half speed, your top end speed isn't going to get any better. If you've ever done any speed training, whether it's in martial arts or maybe somewhere else, you know how tiring it can be, not just in your breathing or your muscles, but in your joints, even in your mind. Go run some sprints, even short sprints, and you'll see what I mean. It takes time to build that up, to build that endurance, that 
physical adaptation in all of those areas. But it's important. It's even critical. Once you've worked through these other drills I've talked about, you're good at relaxing, you know, you've got a good sense as to where speed training can go and what it feels like, I want you to find a heavy bag. Ideally, that bag's going to be in a space where you can work, where you won't be disturbed, you know, your basement or, you know, maybe you have your own training space or maybe your instructor will let you stay after class a little bit. Ideally, video yourself maybe on, on your phone or something. That gives you something to look back on. And then I want you to pick a technique, just one technique. Ideally, the first time you do this, make it an easy technique, something that that's simple biomechanically, like a back fist or a, a punch or a front kick. And I want you to work that technique, just that one technique, and just do single repetitions. And I want you to do them as fast as you possibly can. I don't want you to worry about your stance. I don't want you to worry about your head, your guards, the music, or anything else. Let's say you're working on your roundhouse kick off the back leg. You're going to get into some kind of stance. You're going to throw it as fast as your body allows. Don't worry about power. Don't worry about where you're hitting the bag right now. Just hit it and pull that leg back down as fast as you can. Then I want you to relax completely. Walk around if you want. Settle back down and then maybe after a minute, I want you to throw another single roundhouse kick off the back leg. This is not a cardio drill. This is not a power drill. It's not a relaxation drill. Throwing several of these techniques in a row isn't what we're going for. We're looking at throwing the absolute fastest rear leg roundhouse kick you've ever thrown. And you can't do that one after another. If you practice that kick in that way, maybe 10 to 15 repetitions once or twice a week, it will get faster, much faster. It might take a month, but you will see a difference. And over time, that progress is going to slow as your kick gets faster. But you can maintain that speed with less effort. If you really want to push that speed up, it's going to take more effort. There's a diminishing rate of return for any practice. Maybe that's when it's time to work on another kick. Maybe you've become the absolute fastest person you've ever met at a rear leg roundhouse kick. Well, what about a front leg roundhouse kick? Practicing speed is really advantageous, and it can take a lot of time and a lot of effort. But it's an area that we can use with everything we do in martial arts. Very few of us train at a school where our sparring is full power. So the stronger we get, we don't really get to practice that. But if you have control and you practice your control, right? We talked about accuracy as part of this earlier. You can practice throwing your techniques as fast as you can, at least as fast as you are comfortable with your training partners. They might get really frustrated, but they're going to be really impressed that you can go from floor to their face and back to the floor with your foot in a split second, faster than they're able to react. And that's great stuff. Grandmaster Bill Wallace, Superfoot, talks about speed being an element of power. Speed and strength are what constitute power or speed and force, depending on what we're talking about there, right? So the faster you can throw a technique, even if you don't get stronger, you're becoming more powerful. That was the philosophy to his sparring. Go back, watch some videos of him. So there you go. Five speed drills. Practice them. Let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for other drills, I would love to hear them. Shoot me an email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's all we've got for today. You can check out the show notes for this or any other episode at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can check out all the products we offer and the other things that we do from our main site, whistlekick.com. That's W-H-I-S-T-L-E-K-I-C-K.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.